what I was going to say. When we got off the uh, ferry boat last night, Joan says, we're not, we're going to eat because you'll never get off the park. We said, we'll go to Cape May. And the entire cosmos had, was in Cape May. It wasn't, there wasn't, you couldn't park, you couldn't, I said, what are we doing here on Labor Day looking for a place to eat? So she admitted she was thinking of the same thing. It was really, no, because I would have gone. I, that was awful. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, where's your little Bible? They're all scurrying for their little barbs. Say, so you have yours. You sat all the way in the back and you have yours. She comes all the way up in the front and she doesn't have her. But that's good. You have yours? Or you may not need one because you've got it all memorized, I'll bet. <laughs> Right? No, I'm teasing with you. Okay. Well, the reason that it, it you know, the, that I ask you to, t the reason that I ask you to take one, it's because it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 to me, it's important that you see this stuff. Okay. So let's take a look at Joshua and, uh, you know, Jesus, and let me, let me show you some of the things that he said, and let's try to take a look for a few minutes at them and go over some of these things. On page 793 in, in, in those Bibles, in page 793 in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus says, I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. What would that mean? Obviously, it's not a real key that you would use in a, in a lock and a door. It would mean, a key would mean a, a, a way, um, it would mean a, a direction. Um, what, could you think of a word that would be a key? In other words, what is the key? What is, what is the motivating thing? What is the thing that will open up for you a whole new experience? What will open up for you what is happening now in the universe uh, so that you can, you know, touch, that you can be a part of it. Because he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now, there's one important thing. That's the positive. He's going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That's the positive. Now, he also addresses the negative that we should look at before we go any further. Somebody tell me what page Luke 11 is on in those little things, okay? Luke chapter 11, and uh, just tell me, um, Luke chapter 11, do you know what page that's on? What is it? 846. 846. Would you look at Luke chapter 11, page 846, and look at verse 52. And that's, this is a statement. He's talking to the lawyers who were the people who prepared the law, or the Bible people at the time. Woe unto you, lawyers, you have taken away the key of knowledge because you did not enter it within yourself. Now there's a key. There's a tremendous statement here that he's saying You're, you took away the key of knowledge, of understanding, because you did. He didn't say you took away the key because you didn't go to school. He didn't say you took away the key because you didn't study the book. He didn't say you took away the key because you didn't join a religion or you didn't join a group or an organization or you didn't study the Bible. He said you took away the key because you didn't enter within yourself. Not that you didn't enter within my head to learn from me or enter within somebody else's head to learn from them. You didn't enter into your own head to learn of your own experience. And the key to the kingdom, your kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, see? So he's saying you're taking away that key when you don't enter within yourself. It doesn't make any difference what you learn from me. It's not going to help you one bit. It doesn't make any difference what you learn from anybody. What makes a difference is what do you learn from that cosmic spirit who dwells inside of you? And when we get into the morning rounds, it's coming up uh, in the reasonable future, <laughs> whatever that is. When we get into the reasonable future, what's coming, and we talk about Joseph and the dream cult, we talk about the fact that there's only one part of you that has any relevance to this thing we call God. That's the child. The child within you has to be brought to God. The spirit and the whole rest of it can go into the garbage can. It's meaningless. It is the child that this thing called God is waiting for you to bring. And the key to that is entering within yourself. And so how easy does it make it? Close the book. Close the Bible. Get out of everything and enter within yourself and do it in a spiritual union and it will come to you. That's the promise of all this. Thing. So here he says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. All right, what is it? What is this kingdom that we want to find out? Because 
You could care less about a kingdom of heaven if your car is being repossessed. You could care less about a kingdom of heaven if the doctor says this thing is malignant. You could care less about the kingdom of heaven if you're having a battle with your family or your husband's running off or your wife's running off. All of that stuff becomes instantly irrelevant. You'll be seeing how all of this stuff that we teach and people go, oh, this is the most wonderful thing. Oh, what you said is so wonderful. You get home and you got some kind of a tragedy in your house. You know what happens to all this stuff? Forget about it. Forget about it, because it is meaningless. It doesn't make any difference how meaningful it is to the universe. If you got a problem at home, if you got a problem in your mind, if you've got a problem with your family, if you got a problem with your health, this instantly becomes meaningless. Everything that God said, everything that Jesus said, everything that Buddha said, everything that Krishna said, the only thing that would make a bit of a difference is what is the doctor going to say? And the reason of that is, is because your entire kingdom is between your ears. That's where it is. It makes no difference to you. If, if tomorrow the United States is going to declare war on Haiti and they're going to storm the beaches and the doctor is going to call you up and tell you what your blood test is, you don't care how many people storm the beaches. You don't care if Haiti sinks. You don't care who gets killed invading Haiti. The only thing you're concerned about is what is the doctor going to tell me about the blood test? Because your kingdom is right here. It's contained in this sphere that's located on top of your shoulders. Nothing outside of it is relevant. And don't kid yourself by trying to make yourself believe that it is, because it's not. Because as soon as you start to encompass yourself with concern for the universe, something will happen, and it will force you right here to be concerned about one thing. Uno mio. Right quick, just like that. You start wondering, worrying. Your mind will just automatically do that. And so Jesus says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So what is he giving the key to? Go to page 853. And look at Luke, and look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Jesus says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Page 853, Luke chapter 17, verse 21. Jesus Christ himself says, behold, the kingdom of God is what? Within you. I am giving you the keys to yourself introducing you to the person you know least, yourself. And that's the great joke, where you have people who are trying to tell other people what to do. They don't know themselves. Who are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing here? Have you ever lived before? If you have lived before, what kind of experiences did you have in the past life? What are you here for? Why are, are you here to learn something? What are you going to do in the future life? All of these types of things. The key to the kingdom. The kingdom is within you. I'm giving you the key to enter within yourself. I am giving you the key to open that magic box within yourself and allow all of those things to come to identify with you. So here we are made aware of the fact that we are given the keys that will unlock the hidden mysteries of our very own being. And so, <laughs> and the point is you can prove it. You can prove it by doing it. But you can't read about it. You can't study about it. You have to do it. But what is the key? Jesus says in Matthew 6, 22, if your eye be single, you practice the single eye. He says in Matthew 6, 25 to 6, 33, take no thought. Remember we got to the point this morning when Moses mounted up to the fire mountain, and, and the voice come out of the bushes, take your shoes off. What's he talking about? S take no thought. Separate. Anything that touches the earth, take away. Anything that touches the mind, stop it. Do you realize what's being, do you realize what Buddha taught? Do you realize what Krishna taught? Do you realize what Jesus taught? All of them said, everything that you think about, shut it down. Every single thought, shut it off. Because all the rest of it is... People pick up the Bible and they read this Bible and they read passages that would come out of some insane asylum. Reading this stuff literally have no idea whatsoever. They read about a snake telling people they have no clothes on. Oh, I'm reading God's holy word. How do you know you don't have any clothes on? The snake told me. <laughs> I'm reading a story 
about a man who fell off a boat and the fish swallowed him and he lived in the intestinals of the fish for three days. And the fish burped and the man came out with seaweed coming out of his teeth and he didn't even have any shorts on because they were all digested. And he came up on the beach and he became an evangelist. Sounds right to me. This is God's <laughs> holy word. And I sat there reading it. And then, and then the pastor would come, and now for reading from God's holy word. <laughs> God's holy word. And the man took every kind of animal on the boat. Every animal on the boat. And they all got on the boat, floated away. And nobody even said, how are we going to clean this? There's elephants on the boat. Doesn't make any difference. Every kind of animal was on the boat. And they floated around, and then everything was, and nobody ever questions or says, it sounds, makes sense to me. But now we understand here that what Jesus is telling us, no, this isn't something that you, you, you're going to read about because you cannot practice the single eye while you're reading the book. You cannot practice the single eye while you're going to a class. You cannot practice the single eye while you're, you can only practice the single eye when you're experiencing it. You cannot take no thought and read a book. You cannot take no thought and go to a class. You cannot take no thought and be instructed by anybody. You can only take no thought when you do what? Take no thought. When there is not a thought in your mind, when all is gone and you totally disappear into that place that Buddha called nirvana, then you become God. Most difficult thing in the world, not only for those people who are religious, but for those people who are in New Age, can't deal with it. They cannot deal with it because they, you know what they do? They for a New Age journal, they sell goggles to put on and then you put earphones on and you get a trip to magic land. This is a New Age experience. You know what you're getting a trip to? Into psychedelic lunacy. And you can get the same thing by snorting something. You're baking your brain, only you're doing with sunglasses and earphones. Because the only place you can get to the spirit was when everything is <coughs> nothing. Someday, if you ever get a chance, there's a little brown book written by a Catholic monk from the 14th century. And it's called The Cloud of Unknowing. You should read it. Nobody even knows the man's name. But he knew. He knew. And the one book that you should read is a book that is about 500 pages and there's not one word on it. Then you'll learn. If those books that you're looking through right now, if you read every page of it and had not one word on any page, you would learn. Because as Lao Tzu said, those who think they know don't know, but those who know they don't know, know. <sighs> Why is this? Because you know what goes on in here? You know what I'm talking about? Electricity. It's all electrical. Everything is electrical. Your eyes transmit signals electrically to a part of your brain. And the electrical impulses scatter around and they go through this little computer. And then they paint a picture inside. This is inside all the goo in there. These little things are going around. And you think you're seeing nothing. You're not seeing anything. You're getting electrical impulses. And they're making like a little television screen inside of you. You ain't seeing nothing. You didn't say anything, did you? <laughs> and so then it becomes all electrical energy. You're not hearing anything. If I could make my sound go up to certain 36 million or whatever, three, do you know what? It would, the sound would disappear. All you got, you have in your ears two little things hanging down. And when the wind vibrates them, sends electrical impulses through all of those little electrical circuits and it translates into a code and you think, makes sense? But does it make any difference? Like, what the heck do you care? How you hear it, what you hear, how you see But the point is, there are electrical impulses that are causing you to think that you're seeing this, to think that you're hearing it. And let me tell you, there's another set of electrical impulses that do not come from the physical realm, but come from that thing that you call the spiritual realm. See, you're focusing right now on channel two. What I'm saying to do is take your little thing and, psst, psst, and go to channel seven. 
And there's a whole different set of things going on on Channel 7 that are going on on Channel 2, but you can't read about it in the book. You gotta go there. You gotta switch frequency. You gotta change the frequency of your brain. The key, practice the single eye. When you practice the single eye, you energize an electrical impulse in your brain, and it takes you to a different frequency. <coughs> yeah. A lot of people don't want to go because they can't say that I did anything. I created anything. And when that center, which is the source of that physical electricity pattern in your brain, begins to shut down, a new one opens up. Jesus says, take no thought. Here, this is thought. What is it that you're thinking of? I get all kinds of bizarre things that I think of, weird things that I think of, all kinds of strange things that I think of, all kinds of scary things that I can think of. So Jesus says, take no thought. That's the thought. There it is. Nothing. What is that? That's your thought. See? Now watch this. Go to page 780. Page 780. Matthew chapter 5. In verse 8, what does Jesus say? Blessed are the pure in heart. Why? For they shall see God. See God. See God. Can you imagine such a thing? It says no man has ever seen God. The mind is not capable of seeing God. But when there is no mind, then what? What then? We're not talking about your mind. Do you see how, do you see how absolutely insane it is to try to learn this stuff? Because what did he say? The only time that you can see it is when you can't. You'll see it when you can't. When you allow the, <clears throat> the flower in the spring opens, when nature opens it, inside of you is a flower. And all the reading, all the studying, all the learning, it just is keeping that closed. But as soon as you go into that which is nature and it starts to open, you see. In the center, it's called the pineal or pineal gland of the brain. When you separate from thought, we were talking this morning about Moses, the priest and the seven daughters of Midian, which is the female energy which rises up the seven chakras or the seven wells up to the brain. And it impacts the pineal gland of the brain. And when your pineal gland is stimulated, it opens up. That's energy at the right side. What does Jesus say? If your eye be single, single center, your body shall fill with light. That's pineal or ancient pineal. Now watch. Go to page 28 in the Bible. Turn there, because some of you have never seen this. Some of you have, you don't have to turn there, but some of you have never seen it. It's Genesis chapter 32. Okay. Genesis chapter 32. And look at verse 30. Jacob sees God face to face, and it says in verse 30, and Jacob called the name of the place, what? What did he call it? Was that a mistake? Is that a coincidence? Oh, it's no mistake. No, it's no coincidence that when you practice the single eye, when your energy is... Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. How, who can you, what school can you go to to find out how to energize the pineal gland? Who can tell you? You can't find a person. You can't go... You, it's impossible. But it activates. Who can, who can you find? What horticulturist can you find to say, how can I open this rose? Who can tell you that? 
It opens when it opens. This activates when it activates. And I'll tell you something. If it doesn't make any difference, you know, you know, you know what I want to do? This is the, I, because I'm getting a little, you know what I want to I, When we started this church, whoever started it years and years ago, I was ordained. I want, if anybody asks you, are you ordained? Tell them. I said, no. I don't want it. I want you to turn in my paper. You know? Because you know what it was? It was a bunch of people who gave me approval. And as soon as I started communing with God, you know what they all did? They ran like, excuse the expression, hell out the door. I don't want it. No, I'm not ordinary. I don't answer. I can't answer. Anything. I don't want anybody saying, oh, we give you permission. No, I don't want anybody. I'm not asking for anybody's permission or approval. You can't. I don't want it. Take it down. When I go see Kataro, we'll get a picture of Kataro and hang it there. That will be my ordination. Because <laughs> I don't think, you can't get ordained. You can't and be a part of this. You can't. You know what you are? You're a part of a group. You're a part of a men's club. You're a part of organization. You're a part of the world. You can't. But when you get into this, you're the universe. Is that what you want? That's what you should want now. I don't want any of that other stuff. Why? Because when you start to understand and you start to study and you start to have people telling you this is the way, that is the way, this is how you do it, that is how you do it, you're listening with your intellect. Go to page 932. Look what the Apostle Paul says in page 932, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And look at... Verse 14, what the Apostle Paul says. The natural man, come with me. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit for their foolishness. Neither can he know them. Don't, because they are spiritually discerned. Don't you understand? You can't know this stuff. You can't understand this stuff. It's impossible. Because it's not learned with that which is the intellectual left side. It is only communed through that which was the divine, creative, mystical right side. Can't. What is it? What's the man say? <clears throat> See? You cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. Look what it says. You, you, you have the amazing fact that you've got to abandon your natural mind if you're to learn God. <clears throat> You know what I, what, what I was saying? Uh, one of the things I have a lot of problems with <clears throat> as far as religion is concerned, you'll find a lot of religious people in the, in the fundamentalist thing are very political. Very political. Very right wing, very conservative, very political. How? See, you have to make a decision. It's very tough. Maybe some of the people that were here this morning won't come back because of what I said. And what I said was, you want to be a dedicated, loyal American, that's fine. That's good. But don't tell me you're aligned with God because you can't be both. You can't be. Because once you bring that inner child to this thing called God, then you are of the universe. There's no boundaries. You can have no loyalties to, but to all life. All life. From a pine tree to a whale to a child to an elf to a it doesn't matter black yellow white there's no difference. See, here here's God. Here's God. G. Here's the Christians and the Buddhists and the Hindus and the Muslims and the Jews and all the other. And they're all saying, this is the way he likes it. He likes this. You got to do this. No, I think you know you have to do that. No, you don't have to do that. Yes, you have to do that. Ah! And in the, in the middle is God. Because nobody knows. Because all they've ever known is to fight with each other and say, this is what he likes. This is what it is. God. They've never gone to find out. And so they kill each other, brutalize each other, separate from each other, and do everything that is violent against nature and against life and say, this is the way it is. Why? Because I was taught this. 
And you can't, so you can't be both. And that's hard. Very hard to do that. So you go into these places, and you can get shot because they sing Amazing Grace and play the Star Spangled Banner, and everybody gets up and salutes you, you've got to sit there. Because, do you have an allegiance to God or not? Then if you have an allegiance to God, you are a citizen of the universe. That's tough. That's tough. Because people shoot you for being that. You say, well, I've... I've had this experience. Page 949, look what happened to Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Did you ever read it? It's very interesting. And tomorrow you're off, so what do you care? Where are you going? Hey, it's not only tomorrow you're off. Do you realize the whole thing, the ship may come tomorrow, and the, and the, and the, and the landing gear may come, and the ladder may come down, and you may all get on. How do you know? And then what are you going to do with your books? Oh, I can't. I've got to go to a study Wednesday night. They, uh, they never told me this is what it was like. I, I have to, I, I, I got to close out my bank account. I, I didn't pay that. Do you realize? All of this stuff could happen. So I say, well, where are you going to be? You're going to worry about tomorrow. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, Verse 2, I know a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot have an out-of-body experience. Oh, Christians say, don't do that. That's evil. He had one. He wrote the Bible. <laughs> What's wrong with that? See? But this is interesting. Look at verse 4, how he was caught up into paradise and watched this, folks, and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Everything you've ever heard anyone teach you is not the words that are necessary to be taught because the words that are necessary to be taught to you cannot be uttered. Huh? Oh, I read this book. It's got words in it. It's wrong. Oh, he said this. He spoke words. It's wrong. The truth is contained in words that can't be uttered. That's right. You want to go? You want to go all the way? Then this is where you have to go. And now you start fooling, you stop fooling around, you stop playing religion, you stop playing with churches, and you stop playing with new age groups. Now you're going to get on that cosmic star and fly. You want to do that? Or are you afraid to? You take most people? Wow. Fundamentalists would shoot me. That would be the end of that. New age people? Talk about this? They'd run. They want healing and they want... Uh, smoke and whistles and all this stuff and they want to have these types of exciting things in the new age. I'm talking about flying off into nirvana. You want to go? Now. I'm talking about God. You know what? You still don't know. Make a difference. You had an out-of-body experience? What if you don't come back? What if you just keep going? I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> See, the reason you would go is because you fulfill the biblical principle that David uttered in Psalm 40. The sacrifice of God is a broken and a contrite heart. When you feel broken, then you're free. Then you're ready to go. As long as you've got an ego and something to hang on to here, you'll never go. And that's why the world is wallowing in its own urine. 
and they'll never let go of it. But when it gets so to the point that you say, hey, this isn't the way it should be, then you're ready. Then the little child within you who is the wounded child can be taken by the hand and the child's name is Benjamin. You know what Benjamin means? The son of my right hand. And the son can go to Joseph on the coat of many colors and he'll give you the silver cup. Then you'll know what eternity and nirvana and the universe is all about. That's, you're right where you gotta be. And don't let anybody heal that because by healing it, they'll kill you. Be ready to go. Say, I'm going. It's great. So, how can you know if you can't know? Vashavya scripture of the Hindu says it is the crown of devotion to have these mysteries revealed to the inner gaze. It is the crown of devotion to have these mysteries revealed to the inner gaze. This mystery can be revealed only when the person approaches to understand free from all selfish and mercenary purposes. You know what Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10.8? You have been freely given. Now freely give. See? That's why I want to take my uh, ordination and use it at the bottom of the... Does anybody have a parakeet cage? You can use it for that. <laughs> I don't need any credentials. My credentials are my spirit. My credentials are in the ether. My credentials are in the heart. You enter within yourself. People don't enter within themselves. Let me quote Jesus again. Go to page 789. This one I want you to show. I want you to see with your own eyes. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, <clears throat> verse 11. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Thus it is unlawful to utter these things. So the Bible covers them with a veil of allegory and symbol. Do you know you heard things in this place? And you heard things here, those of you who were here this morning. And I hope that you meditate on them and then let them circulate within your own consciousness and open themselves to reveal truths to you that you've never heard. Not because of what I said, but because of what it is necessary for you to know. Apostle Paul says that there's a veil over one's eyes when they read the Bible. You pick the book up and you read it. And do you realize how misled you are when you read these words? Because the words do not mean what they say. I can tell you that there's not a, a bit of this thing where the words mean what they say. If the words meant what they say, it would say on the front of it, history book. Ancient history, it does it. It says Bible, it's spiritual, it's mystical. The words do not mean what they say. How do I know that? Psalm 78, 2, God says, <coughs> speaks in parables and wisdom of the hidden ancients. Proverbs 1, 6 says, wisdom is understanding the dark sayings. Galatians 4, 25 says it's allegorical. Jesus says all these things are done in parables. Paul says don't take it literally. You'll sit there and read it. Sit there and read it. It doesn't mean what it says. And that which is hidden is hidden because man's ego wouldn't touch it. It's like a limb that is not used. It begins to atrophy. It goes away. It appears hidden. The truth is that we hid it. We don't want to know these things. Because you know what happens when you learn these things and you know these truths? Your ego goes in the toilet. All the things that you want to accomplish all of a sudden are dropped in the toilet, and you hear it flush. What happened? This is, I want to be this, I want to be that. And then the Spirit says, you'll be nothing. Because by being nothing, you become everything. And you know the most beautiful part about this? All you have to do is shut 
excuse the expression again, I can't, shut the damn book, shut all of your study, shut all of your intellect, sit on the floor, enter within yourself, go forward in this age and allow that cosmic power which is just curling and straggling this, this year to take you. What is, what is Paul said? Look at page 979. Almost done. Page 979, the Apostle Paul, what does he say? <coughs> Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of all this junk. And what does he say the junk is? Repentance, faith, Baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection, and eternal judgment. Paul says, it's junk! It don't work! It was never intended to be part of your foundation. It was symbols to tell you about a deep truth. Only thing is, you're studying this. You're worrying about whether you're baptized, you don't know what baptism is. You're worrying about what you're going to raise from the dead. You don't know what resurrection from the dead is. You're worrying about faith in God, and the reason you have to have faith in God is because you're not sure. If you were sure, you wouldn't have to have faith. You have to have faith you're sitting in this room? You're sure. I hope you're sure. But when you're not sure, you need faith. And perfection finds itself turned to the perfect pitch of the universal sound, which is... Om. Om. The perfect pitch of the universal sound, which is Om. It's very important to understand that you can never touch the divine consciousness until the mind is free from desire. You can never touch that. And that's an awfully hard thing to do. Because it's so much a part of our being to want to have things and to want to be something, and to want to do something. It's very difficult. And yet, this is what it is. That's why religion fails. The whole thing is based on the desire. What is the desire of a religious person? Salvation. I want to be saved. Whoever said God wanted you to be saved? Every scripture in the book says God wants you to die. But that's not what we want to do. And so we made up a story. And we said, we want to be saved. And that's why you fail. It says in Psalm 51, 17, like you were saying, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. It's like breaking a horse. And that's the picture of Jesus riding onto the donkey and entering into the holy city. It's when the nature is subdued. And what I'm talking about is very hard because it's, it's not what anybody wants to do. It's no fun. And life is not fun. And what we've done is we've created a hell on earth. We've, we've seen children brutalized and burned and starved. And look at them. Look, can you imagine grown people, Mr. Clinton's in the White House, Fidel Castro's in wherever his house is in Havana, and all of these people are coming on, on, on rafts across an ocean, little babies and children, and they're coming and they're drowning. Do you know how many of them have been eaten by sharks? The sharks are just waiting there for the next ones to come out. And nobody sits around and says, well, you know, we're not letting them in. What do you mean you're not letting them in? Is this God? Is that what you, is, well, it's our country. It's not your country. It's the universe. It's, a, it's the planet Earth. It's, 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 it's the kingdom of God. And so that's why Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you, you come and when you look at this, you have to approach life and you have to approach spiritual things in a whole different way. And you have to stop having fun doing it because it's not fun. It's real. And the reality of something like this means hey, am I going to do it, or do I want to continue to play my game? And our perfection can only be realized when our ego and our desire nature is broken in meditation. Jesus in John 17, 21 uttered a prayer, and he says, I pray that they all may be one, one, every living thing in the universe to be one. 
but it can't happen in the world of competitive religion and it can't happen in the world of our political societies. It'll never happen. It can only happen in the oneness of the center. And the center is Om. And there's no distinction. All is God and God is all. And so then you take something like this and you say, gee, I don't know if I really want to do this. And you say, well, I don't know if you're right about this. You say, oh, I don't either. But I have lived fairly long and I've seen the results of the world and I agree with her 100%. If the ship comes tonight, let's go. It is an absolute, complete, unmitigated failure. And when I saw the New Age coming along, I had a great feeling, great source that the fundamental politics of religion, but then I see the fundamental politics of the New Age. That's not the way. So then choose to rise above fundamentalism, rise above the New Age, and clutch the hand of the universal mother and father God and fly off into nirvana through your conscious meditation. Be one with all that is life, all that is living. <clears throat> and don't try to think that you know, but realize that you don't. I'm not interested in knowing. I want to just be a part. Whatever way, I can, whatever is called, I'm called upon to do, that's what I'll do. Whatever, it makes no difference. See? And when you've reached that point, then you'll be free. As long as you've got a, and, and you know, I think it's not the time to have a desire for a career. I really wouldn't, you know, there's a lot of careers. I mean, remember the guy, Nelson de Klerk, he used to be the president of South Africa? And you remember Mr. Gorbachev, who was the president of Soviet Union? And you could think of all of them. And, and, and Mr. Castro's career is about to come to an end. And all of the people who had careers and they had, yeah, you know, uh, a good, good, good shot at going for a long time and it all falls down. So whatever your plans are going to be, I can only encourage you to keep one ear and one eye tuned to this universe because it's coming very, very close. And, uh, you know, as, as I said, it's very easy to learn uh, what you need to know because all you have to do, and most of you are capable of doing it, is sit down. And discipline yourself to listen to the sound that's coming from the universe. Switch your channel within yourself to say channel seven and allow this to touch you. I wish, um, you know, I don't want to be like uh, all of those people, uh, oh, the end of the world is coming, because it's not, it's the beginning. You know, the beginning. This is the time you've all waited for, you've all prayed about. It's like Jesus said, at that time you'll know I'm in you. Well, I know, you know. Let's go. Lift off. What do you have to go to work Tuesday? <laughs> Maybe you won't have to go to work Tuesday. Isn't that going to be exciting when the whole change comes? Okay. That's why, uh, you know, Vito's lease and all this stuff. Come on. <laughs> Can you imagine this man? He would go crazy. He would, if, if he heard God, if, if nature, God was coming with ships and everything, he would go to a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I work all of my life for that. This is a building. Where you go? Where you go? So, whatever comes, keep watching it. Keep yourself tuned to it. Be very, tu be very uh, attentive to the news and, and TV and say, See? Do you remember the Berlin Wall? Do you remember the Soviet Union? Do you remember South Africa? Do you know that the man that was splitting rocks a couple of years ago in South Africa is now the president, the black man? That can't happen. It did. Do you remember Yasser Arafat? 
He's the president of Palestine. There was no such place as Palestine. They could never have a Palestine. The Jews wouldn't allow it. They do. Did you know that they're signing a truce between the Protestants and the Catholics? Is that one in Ireland? I heard somebody today at lunch say, well, I don't know if that'll hold. You don't have to know if that'll hold. That will hold because that's coming from the universe. And all of these things, if you read about these things in the Bible, you know what, there's not as much stuff that's as bizarre as that in the Bible. This is real, and you're living in it. You're living in it. <laughs> all of this stuff happening, and religious people are waiting for the second coming. Can't you hear the train? Ooh. There's a guy who said it's either the light at the end of a tunnel or a train coming the opposite way. Okay. We said enough. It's just very close. But let me leave you not afraid. Very nice, very exciting, very loving. Whales, dolphins, pussy cats. Beautiful things. Lovely things. No more guns, no more killing, no more starving. People unified together. It's what you call heaven. It's God. And God is very close, and she can't wait to meet you. Good. Thanks a lot. <laughs>